The Sharks lose two more players than Capo Kakinen and Nico Sturm and fall to the Jets one to nothing. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be talking about the Sharks Jets one to nothing, uh, just absolutely enthralling. No, this game was uh, very much a team that had not played in two weeks. Uh, we're going to talk about Capo Kakinen and Nico Stern both leaving with injuries and what that could mean for the Sharks going forward. Uh, dig into this numbers of this game, and then we're going to have another prospect reef check in. We're going to talk about Casper Holton in one of I think his best games I've watched of him recently. So uh, before we get into all of that, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And I know the Sharks are right back at it, playing the Calgary Flames for the first time in the season. It's crazy. We're in mid-February, and we haven't even played the Flames yet. But um, if you can't watch the game, you can check it out on the SiriusXM broadcast. Um, starts at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Catch every hit, every shot, every goal from the local Sharks broadcast on the SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Sharks. So, um Big news coming out of this game, of course, was the two injuries with Capo Kakinen and Nico Sturm. Uh, this was, uh, a, you know, kind of the first game here coming out of the break. I uh, expected a, a bit of a sluggish performance, and I was not disappointed uh, in the Sharks who managed mu to muster up 17 shots on goal. But Capo oh, Kakinen, who was stellar tonight, and Nico Sturm, who's one of the, like, three healthy centers on the roster both left with this game with injuries. I will start with the Nico Sturm one because that one seems like it's going to be more of the long-term effect. Um, takes a hit along the boards, kind of falls on his uh, back and hits his head on the back of the ice, or well, not the back, hits the back of his head on the ice, excuse me. Um, don't know what it is. If it smells like a concussion, or if it walks like a concussion, talks like a concussion, it's probably a concussion. So again, especially with those type of hits and the way he grabbed his head right away, um, hope the best recovery for Nico Sturm, who's battled some injuries this year, right? Left a lot, uh, left in December, and that kind of coincided with the Sharks' second uh, long losing streak where they lost 11 games um, during that time. But um, it'll be interesting again. You're down Hurdle, you're down Logan Couture, and now you're potentially down Nico Sturm for a little while. Hopefully not a concussion. Um, again, I'm not saying it's a concussion. It's just it has all these symptoms. You know, all it looks like it's probably a concussion. If not, we're, you know, hopefully he's back soon. Um, but you never know with those, those head injuries where one day you're okay, the next day things can be a lot worse. So um, hopefully he, I would not expect him back in the game again uh, on against Calgary. So um, what that means, I guess, for the Sharks is you're probably going to have like Luke Cunning sliding back to center right now um, for the team because you're, you're just running out of centers, right? You have um, Graylin, who's a, a natural center, right? You have, uh, Ryan Carpenter is a natural center. You have Eklund, who's played about four or five games now at center. And then Luke Cunning is probably going to have to slide in as your 3C. Um, I would assume Kevin LeBanc will probably slide back in as he has not played a game in a while. Uh, there was articles about him. You know, it looks like the Sharks and him are going to be parting ways at some point. Uh, that's a discussion for a different day. But uh going forward though um the sharks are especially on the second night of a back-to-back -back when they're up in calgary it's and the barracuda are playing down in san diego it's going to be pretty tough to get someone up there uh right away um i know 
they they do have Giovanni Smith and Henry Thrunner are both uh, still in IR, but did travel with the team. But I assume they'll probably just kind of roll with what they have um, going forward. Maybe we see 11 and seven um, against Calgary. But um, then the other one was Capo Kakin, which was very worrisome at the time. Um, it looked like he might have cramped up or pulled something something at the end of the game about a minute left he was kind of left with a one-on-one situation uh, made the save because capo kakinen was absolutely ridiculous in the game and we'll dig into his numbers here in a little bit but um and then struggled struggled to get to the bench as the sharks were you know pulled the goalie and were in the kind of um you know desperation trying to tie things up with less than a minute left but uh like struggled they had to like basically kind of carry him over the bench, like kind of lift him over to the, over the boards to get him onto the bench. Um, but after the game, he did say he was okay. You wonder if it was maybe a cramp again, you had, uh, especially, you know, playing, you had not played a game in two weeks. And then all of a sudden you're facing a barrage of shots tonight. Um, and so hopefully Capo Kakinen can stay healthy he's played really well this year uh we talked about it with shang and i talked about it yesterday on our what's more likely podcast on kind of capo kakinen and mckenzie backwards future but kakinen has been absolutely stellar this year uh was again tonight and actually we can just talk about capo kakinen's numbers since we're here right now because i think he if it wasn't for the injuries he was definitely uh the story of this game um all situations Face uh, with 39 saves on 40 shots. One goal, expected goals against was 405, 975 uh, save percentage, 14 high danger saves on 15 high danger shots, uh, four mid danger, 20 low danger. Um, again, the Jets should have scored, you know, four goals tonight, but Capo Kakinen was just absolutely insane. They talked about it on the broadcast where he's had the least amount of goal support um, this season. And Mackenzie Blackwood is number three on that list. But um, yeah, this game could have, should have easily been three, nothing, four, nothing. Uh, Cause the Sharks could not get any sustained offense going. We'll again, discuss those here in a minute, but um one, you want Capo Kakinen healthy because if you want to try to trade him, uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on uh, two weeks now from the two or three weeks from the trade deadline, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, a couple weeks from the trade deadline. Um, and Capo Kakinen could be a, bet you a really nice piece, especially if he continues to play the way he's playing right now and if he can stay healthy. Or you kind of help build that confidence that you have maybe found some sort of answer for the, you know, kind of the next medium term um, in net with a Capo Kakin and McKenzie Blackwood ta- uh, tandem and hope that your offense can and defense can kind of continue to grow around them. But um, yeah, it was very worrisome to see him. But again, hopefully it sounds like um, he should be okay. Again, I assume it's probably a little bit of cramps slash rust slash kind of being overwhelmed tonight with uh very john snow against the entire army uh gif for, for capital kakadin tonight but um other than that i mean it was very much the sharks uh they got out to four shots and nothing against the jets and then uh they were outshot uh what was it 40 40 shots to to 13 for the rest of the game um just completely overwhelmed by by the jets and if it wasn't for capo kakin and this would have been an absolute slaughter so um yeah we'll see how the sharks continue to navigate these injuries um being down three out of your top four centermen um is going to be ugly i guess is is the only way to to kind of put it um and yeah uh there was a lot of worry if the sharks are going to be able to catch catch chicago um yeah the you you see this is how this is how you're going to catch chicago if you're you're missing these type of guys and we don't know when when kotor and hurdle and, and stern will be back but uh we talked about yesterday with, with shang where it's just it's yeah uh i would have like i said i would not be surprised if we just never see the all, all four centers healthy in one game um going this season which would be just an absolutely an amazing achievement for the 2023-2024 Sharks. So um, we're going to dig into the numbers here, um, see what they look like, and then we'll talk about Casper Halton, who had um, 
just an absolute amazing third period as he helped the London Knights come from a 3-0 uh, deficit to come back and win their game um, on Sunday. So we'll talk about that here in just one second. Our sponsor today is Camino Counseling, uh, or Consulting, excuse me. How would you like to get to know someone better in an hour than you would in a year? Understanding one another better prevents small misunderstandings from becoming big ongoing fights. After providing more than 20 years of service to small and mid-sized businesses, helping management groups navigate con conflicts and onboarding new employees, Camino is offering a digital seminar for families and couples. Did your Valentine's Day gift of tickets to the game not go over as well as you'd hoped? Get the Couples and Family Online Seminar for 25% off uh, for the month of February using the discount code Locked On. Again, that's discount code Locked On for 25% off for the rest of the month at www.caminoconsulting.ca or mention Locked On when reaching out for a business seminar and receive the first five profiles for free. All right, so let's dig into this game. Uh, and the numbers are not kind to the Sharks. So uh, we had 50 minutes of 5v5 time, 50.31 um, or 50 minutes and 31 seconds. Um, and the Jets dominated the shot attempt 77 to 36, 68.14 to 31.86. Corsi 4 here for the Jets. Um, actual shots for 71.7 7 to 28.3%, um, 38 to 15 shots at 5v5. Scoring chances for 36 to 14. High danger chances for 24 to 7. Um, I've not seen a 24 in a long, long, that type of number in a long, long time for the Sharks. Um, that's like goes back to early days uh, of the season when they were just getting absolutely um, housed by teams, 10 to 2 type of situations. Um, expected goals for 3.88 to 103 in favor of, of the, the Jets there um, at 5v5. That just, again, how good Capo Kakinen was tonight before he got injured. Um, the shot chart looks like um, in the Jets offensive zone. It just looks like uh, Jupiter's red eye uh, just plopped in front of Capo Kakinen. It is bright red. Um, it is ugly. It is swirling quickly. Um, and it's just swallowing up uh capo kakadin who was hanging in there for for dear life tonight um for the forwards they're going to be wonky because of the injuries and stuff but at least the starting forwards uh we had zetterlin granlin duclair bear banoff eklund luke cunning um and then we had sturm um <clears throat> sorry excuse me sturm mcdonald um hoffman and then zadina carpenter bailey <laughs> um yeah it's it's not pretty so um again with with court with the a natural stat trick because of mcdonald him being still labeled as a defenseman it's a little bit tougher to kind of look at uh where everyone is kind of laid out uh, at least with the those type of among um, like Corsi and stuff like that but uh, we will do our best here so um these uh, Zettelin Granlin Duclair line played 11 07. Each shot attempts for gave up 17. Um, actual shots was three to seven, uh, 0. 0.17 to 0. 0.61. Expected goals four, three to 11 scoring chances given up, uh, one to nine high danger chances. Um, yeah, three, five, 11 zone starts. So a lot of defensive zone starts there. So, um, again, kind of trying to protect the Eklund line as he's transitioning into the center role. Um, they played 10, 33, the Eklund bear Ben off kind of line, seven to 10 shot attempts, um, uh, actual shots is four to six in favor of the jets 0.3 to 0.38 expected goals for, uh, three to four scoring chances, three to one high danger chances. All those are that's in favor of of the Sharks. Um, four two two zone start. So definitely was trying to shelter that line. Um, and then the Zadina Carpenter belly line plays six fifty eight four to seventeen shot attempts, zero to nine actual shots, point zero two expected goals, four to point three four expected goals allowed, zero to eight scoring chances, zero to four high danger chances. With two zero four zone starts, 
um, the let's see, Hoffman. Um, Hoffman had uh, Corsi for 26.67. Um, so eight to 22 shot attempts, uh, Carpenter 1204 before he left injury five to 19 shot attempts for 20.83 and the McDonald's six for 17 shot attempts for 26.09 of course before. So that line, um, didn't have a good night as well with, uh, they had, I think a fair amount of defensive zone starts too. So, um, yeah, uh, tough. Tough night for the Sharks here, just as they kind of, again, Capo Kakinen covered a lot of sins tonight. Um, a, lot, a fair amount of, a lot more of the kind of odd man rushes uh, that we've kind of seen recently from San Jose. They've been a little bit better tightening up the zone, but we saw tonight it was uh, much rougher than we had seen recently. Uh, Luke Cunning led the way uh, with individual 5v5 course C4. At 53.85, everybody else was under 50%. Um, so including that bottom line that did not have a, a great night. Defensively, um, Jan Ruda, Kalen Addison, Kyle Burroughs, Jacob, or sorry, uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, um, and Mario Ferraro um were the defensemen tonight. Um Ferraro kind of led the way def- uh, at least with the Corsi four um in his almost 21 minutes of 5v5 uh 42.86 Corsi four Ruda was uh 34.21 Corsi four Addison 33 Addison Bros was at 33.33 uh, and then Vlasic 25 23.53 and Emerson 16.67. So um again the Sharks got manhandled in the shot attempt. So those numbers are going to continue to just be ugly. So I think it just kind of goes to show how great of a night Capo Kakadin had tonight um, as he absolutely kept the Sharks in this game that they had probably had no business being in. Um, as for the, we didn't get to see too, too much of the power play, um, especially now without hurdle and without Kotor um, had one at, uh, they had one opportunity and it was looked very rough. Uh, Eklund did have a pretty good shot attempt um, in that, but just kind of flubbed it a little bit. But for the most part, they, they really kind of struggled to get any kind of consistent offense going, whether it was five V five or on the power play. Um, and when you haven't played in two weeks, to be honest, I, I kind of expected that for, for the sharks tonight, especially going up against a good Jets team. I know they've struggled a little bit recently, but um, the Jets are a still very talented team um, and should be in the mix to, to potentially have a long uh, playoff run, especially if they want to try to add pieces here at, at, at the uh, trade deadline. But um sharks gonna be right back out of calgary uh calgary who's been red hot recent kind of coming out of the break here and has played really really well um so i'm ex- expect we'll see mackenzie blackwood uh, i assume we'll see mackenzie blackwood in this game um and i again i wouldn't be surprised especially if nico sturm's hurt um if the sharks maybe do run 11 7 um or they could put LeBank in but if you're a hochuk who is a healthy scratch um, you could maybe, you know, bring in if Henry Thrun is ready, you could maybe bring him back up. So see what the Sharks do here. But I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sharks go 11 and seven, um, because it's really hard to try to get a Ford, um, in, in San Jose or from basically from San Diego all the way up to Calgary this quickly. So, um, we're going to talk about one Casper Holton in here in just one second. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next sporting event, and that's where game time comes in. Fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, theater events near you. Um, the thing I really love about game time is they have views of the seats, right? Uh, nothing worse than getting to an event and realizing you have bad seats. Um, I like you can kind of just look around the app, um, click. I'm I like to click a lot and see what kind of pops up and what kind of you know fits what I want to have my for my viewing experience. Um, actually, the only thing worse than getting bad seats is going to check out and you get slammed with a bunch of fees. That's why I love the all-in pricing because it shows you exactly how much you're going to pay for, for your tickets uh, before you go to check out. Um, you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps 
and they're obsessed with finding ways to help save money on tickets. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Casper uh, Holton, who um, I be the first to admit I've been very kind of critical of Holton's game so far with London. And this game, I feel very much still a lot of questions about Halton, and but we saw, we kind of saw that flash right uh, from Halton that you're, you've been kind of waiting for. So um, I watched Sunday's game, Sunday two 11's game, uh, London won in overtime against uh, at Oshawa four to three Holton and had two goals, one assist, five shots on goal with two penalty minutes. So yes, I have the shift by shift breakdown of Halton's game and um, started very, very slow. Uh, I think Holton had just a handful, two or three shifts in the first period as London was in a lot of penalty trouble. Um, he got on the power play of course, and was in his normal spot um, had, you know, they, the, the London's power play is very much, um, move the puck around and then try to get Halton in to, to bomb a shot from the Ovechkin spot, right? Kind of right at the faceoff circle on the left side. Um, left side, of the, right. Move, move, move. Bam. Um, and you see it's it's very effective. This London power play is really, really good. And Halton and Lee is one of the leaders in the OHL when it comes to power play points uh, or power play goal. Like he's up there, right? Um and they're very, this team is very well. They have a lot of talented players, a lot of guys who have been drafted, right? Last year's draft, they had added, you know, I think they had multiple guys who got drafted, including Denver Barkey, uh, who I think was the third round pick, um, Easton Cohen, who is, you know, a pick by the Maple League. Like they have a lot of talented players. Um, so it's hard for Halton to kind of crack that top six, right? He's playing on the third line. And you're, you're, my kind of big takeaway is, if he can earn himself a top six spot on this team, uh, eventually, whether it's later this season or as the season winds down or going into next year, um, you're going to, I think, see Holton and take that next step. But I think right now he's really stuck in his role as a third line guy. Um, and he still has a lot of stuff to iron out in his game. Uh, and we'll talk about that here and forward, but, the third period, though, in the, this game is kind of where you really saw, okay, I get it. I get it. If Halton can play like this, the Sharks really, really have something because um, he does have – he's got – we know the shot, right? He's physical. Um, you saw, like, the forecheck – and so we'll get kind of, I'll get to there. I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, this game kind of had a little bit of everything from Halton. And so first period was very slow, got a power play opportunity and really didn't do much um, and had a very kind of sluggish 5v5. Again, I think that credit that to just not getting out there and then maybe trying to, I think was trying to do a little bit too much and very limited ice time. Um, just, yeah, not on the ice. Um, second period, you kind of start to see a little bit more from Halton and uh, where he got a couple more shifts. So in some power play opportunities, um, he does a kind of a good job of, of forechecking kind of good puck protection on one of the early shifts in the uh, second period. I uh, was able to kind of puck protection, which I didn't really expect out of Halton, but you kind of make sense. He's definitely a bigger player, especially kind of in, in the OHL. Um, not, I think Caden Lindstrom, for example, is much better at it um, because I think he kind of uses the hurdle like, I'm just going to put my butt uh, in the way and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but Holton, you can kind of see his ability to protect the puck when he gets an opportunity. He just, again, he's not really the primary transporter on the ice. So he's kind of more of a passenger and trying to kind of take advantage of the opportunities he does get, especially again on the power play. But um, he had a power play opportunity about midway through the um second period and this is kind of where you started to see the flashes of like okay i get it um multiple shot attempts in the, the this power play again they're feeding him um the puck and working the to kind of get the puck around and moving it towards him to try to get that shot and again 
multiple multiple shot attempts uh that shot is ridiculous uh when he when he gets it on net um if he can ever develop a shot pass the guy is going to be unstoppable in the power play where he's just going to like you know that eric carlson where look everything looks like a shot until the very last second and then turns into a pass um if he can ever develop that um and it's kind of like that change up pitch from a pitcher where it looks just like a you know a fastball but it's coming at you at like 86 miles an hour if he can ever develop that uh good god watch out but um yeah little you know that use that first power play opportunity you saw a lot um second they got another power play and he wasn't on the top unit and the power play unit looked way worse i think that's a kind of a credit to halton and, and his power play um and what he can do on that but um the third period though gets a shift early in the period i think you can kind of see, you, you saw the kind of momentum growing with him so um was physical kind of carried the puck um retrieve had a really nice play where he kind of Gets the puck along the board, centers it. Nobody's there. He's the one who kind of retrieves it after it kind of bounces around. He he realizes as soon as he lets it, kind of a bit of a blind pass, um, but he realizes it, and he he's the guy who kind of retrieves the puck. Um, that's what you like to see, right? If I make a mistake, can I at least fix my mistake? Um, then um, he does take a penalty, high-sticking penalty, but as soon as he comes out, it was like a switch flipped. Um, he comes flying out of the box. Um, the thing I wrote down after watching the shift where he comes is where has this guy been? This is this is the shift here. So he comes out of the box, um, creates an opportunity right away. Um, he gets the puck back, stick handles through multiple defenders to get another high danger chance. Um, puck kind of gets bounced around in the the, the zone. Um it gets out of the zone. He wins a foot race to go get the puck um, along the boards against like three guys. He's in the, then he has the Don type goal. It was absolutely filthy where he's just kind of has a guy on him and he's just able to kind of generate enough space, right? Where he out physical is the guy. And then he has that finesse to kind of realize almost like Curry where take where Steph Curry takes that like kind of little step back three where he's like, okay, I'm going to have you on me, have you on me. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's three feet of, of space between me and you. And with that shot, there's nothing that the goalie or the defender could do. Um, the, the, that, that shift was like, okay, this is why the sharks are, why the sharks are really excited about him. And if he can find this shift, if he can do this more consistently instead of once a game or once every few games, the sharks are really going to get something. But um, the next shift all over the offensive zone again, winning battles, uh, wins a board battle. Um, kind of the puck is behind the net, wins a board battle um, against the guy. Guy, He's got a guy draped all over him, is able to center a pass that leads to a goal. So he gets a primary apple in that, that shift. <laughs> the next shift um, carries the offensive zone. Uh, finally is able to kind of transport the puck, carries it into the zone. Um, he's able to find open ice uh, again. Um, in front of the net, he's left all alone. Absolute snipe. Three, three points and three shifts from Casper Halton. Um, and then he gets on the power play for the in overtime. Uh, has a huge one timer that just misses, and they end up coming back. But that that's what you're wanting to see. And I think again for Halton, it's can you do that consistently, right? Again, and this team, London, is very good. They're a very talented team. They're one of the best teams in the CHL. Um, not just the OHL, but the CHL altogether. Like they're they're projected to go very far in the playoffs. Um, and Halton, again, right now he's very much a power play specialist type of guy. Um, and it's hard for him to crack that top six, especially but but. If it happens this year or if it next year, if he's a top, like a bona fide top six guy for London um, and he can get these opportunities and makes the most of them, that's what you're looking to see. Um, but yeah, that third, if you want to watch, if you have the CHL TV, go watch Oshawa London Knights, go watch that third period. And you're, you would think that Casper uh, Holton and it's, it's almost musty esque, not as, as I, musty does this more night in, night out. 
but you you kind of you like see that like okay the physicality um the shot you see all the pieces kind of come together in that period so um good what you want to see right growing steps from the prospects so uh we'll be back tomorrow of course talk about the flames game uh maybe we'll talk about uh some of the kind of percolating trade rumors out there um so make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts and of course you can watch on youtube as well follow the show on twitter facebook and instagram at locked on sharks follow me on twitter at my fry hole until tomorrow bye friends